Hello, I'm Verdi Arbusto, and this is the channel of Schumann Resonance Harmonics on YouTube and Facebook. Thank you for being here. Uh, my name is Verde Arbusto, and the truth be told, I am a hot mess. There's not another way to put it. Uh, maybe you got all your shit together. I don't. I know a bunch of stuff. Doesn't help. Uh, you know, it's all screaming and crashing, in the words of my sister, Heather. Um, so, uh, thank you for being here, you big, beautiful people. Um, you're wonderful, you're fabulous. Um, I'm, uh, trying a little something different with, uh, uh, I, I try to filter. I'm working with a filter on the, um, uh, the capture software that I'm using. Um, there's a couple, I mean, sharpen filter, and there's another one to check the gamma levels and all that. So, um, a little technical thing, but I think I, I, you know, I showing up, I'm looking at myself in the, this is almost like a mirror. So I do this sort of like looking in the mirror. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I see the little better of an image, like, you know, new glasses, uh, been working on the different, you know, kind of format on the, um, uh, the, the, the stage that I'm doing this on. So thank you all for being here. Um, if you're new, welcome, remember to please remember to like, share, comment, subscribe. And if it's not too much trouble, please hit the little bell next to the, uh, subscription button and select all, or you will likely get none of the notifications. I um, mean, it's a suggestion. If you like the video, if you like what I do, or you like your channel, it's not just me, but any channel that you like, hit the a bell and select all. Otherwise, it actually doesn't really count as an official subscriber. You're just there in name only. Um, and this is some of their, uh, this is a little bit of the inner workings of YouTube and their algorithm. Uh, just so you know. All right. So um, this is going to be an observations video. Uh, it's um, a couple days after this now. It's a 20, it's a 30th, but this is based from the 28th. Um, and I've said this before that I start out with the date and then at a certain point, it just becomes the title of it and not the date it's coming out. Other people that do videos that aren't the deep dive guy can get the title and the date to be the same. I try that and it doesn't always work. Um, so, uh, all right. So um, I think there's a lot that we can talk about. The observation, just uh, for those who don't know, the observation videos are supposed to be, um, you know, kind of a ad, uh, what's it, ad hoc kind of thing that, you know, I, I, I kind of do it on the, on the fly. There's, uh, they, they were meant that it's not like research material that I just kind of give you the, the observations of what I'm seeing as I'm looking at the spectrogram and as, as I'm looking at the material, you know, what's going through my mind. So that's the original intention of it. Um, and uh, a lot of these, I don't really, I didn't have music. I wasn't doing music. It was just the material. I don't know if I'm having music this time. You know, I, uh, I have something set up, but I'm not sure if I'm going to play it. I know everyone likes the music, the Aaron mix, you know, it's, it's, the thing about these videos, um, but I do a lot of videos with the mixes on them and there's copyright issues with the music that some countries don't, some countries get blocked from seeing the videos due to the music. So, you know, like you just got to realize that and recognize that, that that's one of the issues with the copyright. And if I was monetized, I wouldn't get any money for doing any of these videos because the, the majority of them have music on them. Uh, so. With that said, please support me on P Patreon and PayPal, because if I was monetized, a lot of these wouldn't be getting money anyway. Okay, so I think before I get into the video, I'm going to, um, or the material of of this video, um, I have a couple um, videos that I shot earlier today, um, and um, this is what I spent my day doing. Um, and, uh, you know, a lot of you know that I'm in the Northeast, and, you know, we, you know, we got a lot of snow um, and not as much as we were supposed to. And I will thank my elemental guides for helping with that. Um, so I, this is me today. Hold on. For those of you in the warm climates, and there's a few of you, uh, one in particular who shall remain nameless, but if she was going to have a name, it would be Swanee. I'm thinking of you today. So I'll play this. Hold on. This is a um, <clears throat> quick selfie video update. 
maybe it'll make it online somewhere. All right, so this is my day here. Um, yeah, I should. I'm going to post this as a short, I think. I'm not on a TikTok, but it would be a good TikToker. This is my day. That's my work. This is my office today. You know, I got all that behind me to the corner. I don't, I don't have to, but I live here. If I don't, no one will. Uh, and that's my, um, my shovel, this year's shovel. Um, pretty much every year I get a new shovel. Not a new, but new to me. Uh, got to, you know, like every year it snows. Pretty much like this, that, that shovel will be beat up. All right, so, you know, hopefully uh, you're having a good day. I love the snow. I love the snow in all its aspects. Um, just it's a beautiful day today. I'm just much love to you all. I love the snow. Uh, it's cold. It is cold. It's cold indeed. There's no warming here. Alrighty, so this is me. I'm walking. I no longer have my work implement with me with me. That's inside. Alright, so that's the the entryway to the uh, the apartment. Uh, I dug that out. I excavated that. This right here in the front. I excavated that. And then this is more of what I was doing today. Right, so behind me, right? All that I cleared out. All of that. So this was my job for the day. Hopefully you can see it. And that's my neighbor over there, Shane. I helped him. We dug out that big, huge with the uh, the fence with the uh, the pointy things on the top. We dug that out. And that goes back this house here. This landlord's not ever going to do that. I don't think he's ever done that. So they said we were supposed to get two feet. I don't think we actually got two feet here. I think it was closer to a foot and a half. But the drifts are, uh, and the banks, the snow banks, where we had to, uh, where we had to pile everything was pretty significant. This one here. Can't even see behind me. It's all white. But that one there comes up to about my chest. Yeah, right about, yeah, right about here on me. If you can see that. So right below my chest. Yeah, approximately. And what I do is on the top, I tap it down. Um, I think that's really important. This is largely loose stuff. So when you're working with loose granular, granularly snow, it's important to kind of pack it down as often as you can. And you got to remember that snow, even if it's fluffy, that if you work it and kind of pack it and compact it, the, 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 uh, as you compress it and, and, and you create friction, and that helps to kind of warm it up and it packs and then it'll refreeze. So there's a lot of loose, uh, a lot of, what do I say, extra area in uh, snow that's fluffy. Right. There's someone walking up. Let's get out of the walkway. All right, so that was today, the crazy blizzard of 2022. Yeah, I don't know, it's not bad. That was the last two hours of my life. It was actually closer to an hour of shoveling just to get a pint of creamer, half and a half for my coffee. <laughs> Yeah, that's nice. Looks nice. Yeah, all the world as well. All right, so on that cheery note, that's uh, a good update for now. Yeah. So on that cheery note, uh, I'd say I wish you were here, but I'm sure you're in, you're happier where you are. So on that cheery note, have a nice rest of your day. Namaste. Thank you. What you're looking at there is not a product of my shoveling, for what it's worth. Um, we have the boss has a crew um, who goes out doing the uh, shoveling and plowing and all of that. He's a like he's got you know a shovel. Uh, what the hell do you call it? He's got a plow. He's got shovelers. Guys that go out and do it. He's got a crew. 
So what you're looking at there is the snow hurler, uh, the snow thrower um, that clears a nice two shovel wide path. So I wouldn't have been able to do that, but Charlie with his uh, machine is able to do that. Um, and it's a nice looking pathway, right? I'm looking at this, it's a winter wonderland. Um, if my mom was alive, she would love that. I'd send her a picture of this. You know, think of you, mom. Um, she doesn't like the cold so much, but she loved snow and she loved the, the winter, you know, winter wonderland. It's, you know, you should have snow in the middle of winter. Like, you know, it's New England and, you know, it's just, it's proper. Um, so I'm kind of looking at the snow and thinking of my mom. She's not here. You know, she passed in 2004. It was 2004 or five. Um, I think it was in four. Um, so it's been, you know, like 16 years now plus um, that she's been gone. Um, so I miss my mom. Um, this had, a, had me thinking of her today. So I hope your day has been good. Um, and uh, thank you for being here. Okay, onward and upward. Um, I'm Verdi Busto. Uh, thank you for being here. Um, I need to do a video. Um, it's uh, nice to check in with people. Good to catch touch base and everyone to catch up. Uh, and um, you know, I I need to do a video. Um, you know, kind of just to keep every everything going. Uh, Got to pay the bill somehow. You know, e even though these are like voluntary these are you know donation based uh, you know it's still i i have the donation cup out and and you know i gotta do the videos gotta do this content that's why i'm here um and it's just just got we got things to to talk about so um onward and upward all right okay let's play some music let's do this we got oh hold on hold please system processing all right we got something all right so um, you know, we all love the Aaron mix. Got to play this. Got to do this. Um, I need a vacation. Uh, a good Aaron mix is about as close as I'm getting to a vacation. So, on that cheery note, I will meet you on the other side. Pass me 
the hypnotic, aw shit, this party just started, pass the cup, it's time to get retarded, toss it up, this party just started, I'm giving you something with jazz, move your body, work your body, shake your body, I'm giving you something with jazz, move your body, shake your body, shake your body, I'm giving you something with jazz, move your body, shake your booty, work your body. Okay, let's pause. Hold on. We're about to go into a new mix. Roll it on back. Oh, slow down. All righty. Oh, please. All righty. All righty. That was a minute and a second longer than I had uh, planned it uh, to go on. Um, uh, I'm making food in the background, so I, I have some, you know, I'm otherwise distracted. Um, so, um, all right. Onward and onward. Onward and upward. Let's get adjusted before I get into the material. Um, if you need to, get yourself coffee, uh, get some some popcorn, some ice cream, you know, whatever you got. Um, let's, let's get into this. Let's get ready. Um, it's almost 20 minutes. All right. Let's, let's do this. Okay, we're back. Onward and upward. All right. Um, I got my Patreon page up there so we can, um, you know, to, 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 as a reminder, you know, uh, come on over and be a Patreon supporter or just put a buck in the bin of uh, PayPal. Um, you know, whatever you can. I, I, I need money to for the mobile studio. Um, I, I don't eat money. I don't drink money. I don't breathe it in. Uh, but the mobile studio does consume it. So please, um, you know, do consider uh, putting a, a buck in the bin to help me out. I appreciate it. All right, I'm back. OK, this has been an all day effort for me. Um, all right, so uh, what I'm going to do, these are, like I said, this is an observations video. Um, I want to address this seemingly data anomaly, all right? Uh, I'm calling it a signal dropout. Um, I'm not sure what better to call it. All right, um, we're going to address that. I'm also going to do a refresher on some things that um, I've talked about before and maybe introduce a few things I haven't talked about before. I'm, I'm not sure. Um, 
All right, so I'm going to keep this up here. This is my Patreon page, like I said. I'm going to keep this up here and read from the text, the, the script that I have written on this. All right. um, we notice a seeming anomaly, all right, this right here. A sudden drop of intensity, which is the loudness or the decibel rating, as measured in the amplitude dependency. All right, so right here, you see this? I pointed out this right here. I'm giving you the bottom where it dropped out, that number, that number, that number. So it's like a, a almost a cliff. Like it's just a sheer, it's not quite a sheer face. You can see it's got a little bit of a incline to it, but it's mainly just a dropout as if a switch was hit or something. Um, and I point this out, I bring up the dependencies so you can see the actual data. All right, so we're looking at the white mode, the yellow mode, the red mode, and the green mode. See, with the green mode, there's a little bit of a drop, uh, enough to say it's across the board, but the green didn't drop that much. It was all the high, higher intensity, higher uh, amplitude uh, readings that dropped precipitously. So one of the questions that we always ask when we see these kind of things is, is it the machine itself or is it local to Tomsk? Um, or is it something that's happening around the world that we need to be concerned of? Uh, I've mentioned this before that simply because something shows up on the graphs in Tomsk does not mean it's happening around the world. And as I have explained before, local interference tends to be a thinner line. All right. So we consult the dependencies. That's what I always do here. I always give you that, the, the, the spectrogram with the three dependencies. Um, and Because you, you always got to look at that. You always got to look at the raw data of what's happening. All right. So we have a drop in amplitude, okay, right here. Boop. Drop in amplitude, almost simultaneous with this right here of a rise in the magnetics, a rise in the, um, the quality. Um, and you see there's almost an inverse function that happens here with this amplitude boop, and a drop in the, um, the quality. Mm, okay, I brought it to the paint program. I think it shows it a little better. I can I get a little bit more control over it. Um, I put the, the, the line up here so you could see it and line it up like that. So as we get this, this drop here after a, a, a peak, a rise, a, a, a series of peaks, we have this area here from 1 to 11, it's 10 hours, according to UTC time, it's 10. That's 10 hours of a peak. That's during the day. All right. So at at the time where it would normally be dropping off, like 11 o'clock at night, it dips, it dips, it drops. And you see this here, this rise going from the bottom here up to the top here, you see a rise. So during the same period of time of when there's a amplitude burst and bursts increase in amplitude in the atmosphere, there is a subsequent drop and the quality, which is the magnetics. And I pointed this out before, I've mentioned this before regularly, frequently I mention this, that you will often see with the rise in, a, a rise in the increase in amplitude, a drop in the, the, the magnetic component, which is quality, and you will also see a drop in the frequency as well. Frequency is the measurement of the quality. Frequency is the measurement of the wavelength of the quality. Uh, as I've said before, the quality is the magnetic component of the Schumann resonances. Okay, and as a review, we have two axes here. Um, there is the, the vertical, which is the amplitude, and then there is the horizontal, which is quality. <clears throat> so it's important to know which, which one you're looking at on the um, on the data the final data once again the uh so we're all familiar here the spectrogram is this top image here and then the next one the below that is amplitude below that is quality this right here is quality and then this is f 
F stands for frequency, okay? Q stands for quality, and A stands for amplitude. And we have, once again, we have four modes of each that are measured. And a mode is, I've made videos on this, maybe I'll do the card thing and put the, you know, link to the modes video up there. Um, but the mode is different. It's a measurement of the wavelength or the size of the wavelength based on the slope characteristic. And a slope is a like an incline. So based on the shape of the wave, that's what the mode is measuring. That's what the mode is detecting is the shape of the wave itself. And again, that's called the slope. Okay, so I went through the images, the, uh, the, the spectrogram, the thing that everyone calls the Schumann, that's on the top. Um, and that's the spectrogram. That is a visual represent. It's a three-dimensional visual representation of what is essentially invisible, and that's radio waves. Um, so the amplitude is the electric side. Where we, this is the amplitude. That's the electric side, as measured in pico decibels. Okay, it's which is a negative. Uh, pico is twelve to fifteen decimal points below a zero threshold or the floor, what they would call the floor. So when you're looking at the power number, like in this case, it's 7.1, right? So they give you power rating, you know, the amplitude is the power rating number. So when they, when they give that to you and you look at the power rating, you have to remember it's a negative value. It's below zero. It is extremely subtle. It's extremely delicate. And you of yourself wouldn't really notice it. You wouldn't feel it because it is so subtle. And there's a lot more things that are around you that are more powerful than the Schumer resonances that you would feel. And it's important to know the things around you that you do feel, which are not the Schumann resonances, comma, yet, comma, which may be affecting you, period. So in actual terms, even though they're telling you it's 7.1, that is a pico. So it's less than a zero. So as I explain this, so I'm going to explain it to you. What, what it means is that, hold on, let me read what this says here. Oh God, I hate editing videos. All right. So what it means is that at the moment it experienced a dropout at 11 o'clock, basically 11 at night, UTC. It was 6.14, according to the dependency report. So right here, it was 6.14, right when it dropped out, okay? Then it dropped to 3.26 picodecibels. This is properly read. When you read the, 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 the dropout point that it hit, it is 0 0.000, comma, 000, comma, 000, comma, 326 decibels. That's negative 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, decibels of amplitude. That's voltage, atmospheric. It's electro, electro volts in the atmosphere. If you got hit with 0 0.000000000326 decibels, you would not in any way feel it. You couldn't, of a voltage, decibels of voltage, you couldn't feel it. it. One volt, you may or may not be able to feel. All right, let's just say that. You may or may not be able to feel one volt if that was applied to you. This is literally a quadrillionth or 326 quadrillionths of a volt. That's the power of the Schumer resonances is quadrillionths, quadrillion of a volt, quadrillionth part. <laughs> it's a pico part of a volt important to understand the true power of the Schumer resonances and how almost powerless they are and how subtle and how unnoticed they can go by and more to the point how not 
causing the ringing in your ears. The Schumer resonances are not ringing your ears. They're not giving you vertigo. They're not giving you stomach trouble. They're not causing you to not sleep. They're not doing anything of the sort. But your un unshielded domestic electronics who are at least a thousand times, if not 10 to 100,000 times more powerful than the Schumer resonances, those are doing stuff. Right? The things you ignore, the electronics around you, you prefer not to, not to think about, you ignore them, dismiss them as having any bearing in your life. That's what's causing the ringing, not the Schumer resonances. Okay, so one of the... Um, one of the main things that I've said I, I, from the beginning, the first rule that I've that I've said that's important to know is knowing the difference between the local and the global, right? What's happening locally versus what's happening on the global scale, okay? And it's important to know the difference. And as I've said from from the beginning, thin lines or bands, a line would be vertical. A band is what's horizontal. That's the difference between the line and the band, right? So whether it's a thin line or it's a band, either way, the thin lines are local. Uh, amplitude does not travel that far in the atmosphere before it starts falling down and becoming magnetics. The voltage, the, the, the signal this way is the amplitude. That's the voltage. That's the, the vertical conductivity channel. That is what you're looking at with the amplitude. That is not the magnetics. That is not the Schumer resonances. These spikes, keep telling you that, keep saying this to everyone. Eventually, maybe you'll, you'll kind of get into the swing of it and understand it, that the, vol the voltage spikes, the uprights there are not the Schumann resonances. That is voltage. The upright spikes are the voltage. A voltage in the atmosphere does not last as a voltage long. It flops over, it falls over, it kind of, what's the word? It starts here and then it kind of smooths out like that and becomes horizontal. It doesn't take long. The, the, uh, the point of it going, being, being flashed, being released as free floating voltage into the atmosphere, like lightning, a lightning flash, it becomes a free floating voltage in the atmosphere, just kind of travels along. So it does not travel as free floating voltage for long before being converted into magnetics and a coherent wave. The longer that the amplitude kind of perpetuates in the, the environment, the, the, the closer to magnetics it gets. I think that's the best way to put it. Uh, local lines or bands or uh, thin lines are local. Um, next thing I wrote was sorting out the diurnal variations, understanding the difference between the daytime and the nighttime reading, why those would be different, right? Why it's important. And I've talked about the diurnal variations. When the sun is directly overhead, the ionosphere is the strongest and is the tightest, and you are you have the most Schumann resonances during the day when the sun is the strongest. At nighttime, when the sun goes to sleep, everything slackens up. It, it, you, you essentially lose some, some of the resonances. It leaches out into space, which is fine. It's fine. It really is fine. If we, if we lose some Schumann resonances, it's not like you losing your mind, where you may not ever get it back. Once the sun comes, you know, 12 hours later, maybe eight hours later, we'll have the resonances back. The sun will turn the resonances back on magically. Okay. Just so we all know that I've had discussions with people about, you know, oh, we're losing the Schumer resonances as if it's air or oxygen. And it's like, no, that's not what happens. Not in a million thousand years is that what happens. No. The Schumer resonances are not like a liquid that's contained, you know, they are vibrations and resonances. Since they're not causing collective consciousness, that since it's not automatically attached to a rising collective consciousness, it's okay if we leech some Schumann resonances out into the rest, out into 
the space, basically. Okay, so some uh, semi-basic refreshers. Uh, most of this stuff I've talked about before. I've introduced this before. These are, be these are technically refreshers. It may be new to you. If it does come to news as you, hopefully it'll come as good news. Uh, nano is the scale used to measure the interplanetary magnetic field, the IMF, as well as the telluric currents of the planet itself. So most of the energy that's floating around, the active energy that propagates, is in the nano scale. The Schumer resonances are a thousand times weaker, and that is the pico. They're just echoes. They're whispers. They're very subtle. They're incredibly subtle. They're, they're a quadrillionth of a volt. Like it's, you don't understand how little that is. <laughs> it's subtle. How many zeros are in that, that number? You don't know how subtle it is, right? Everyone's asking, oh, is it causing my head to blow up? You know, people are asking like all kinds of stuff about the Schumer resonances because they, they don't see a negative number there, right? If you, if you actually saw that number with the amount of zeros that come with it, you wouldn't be asking, oh, is that making my ears ring? You'd be like, are you kidding me? People are, are concerned about like that weak of a voltage when your wireless stuff that's like right next to your head right you put the, the phone right next to your ear like yes your your ears are ringing you're putting a, a microwave right up to your head yes yes your ears are ringing stop using your phone next to your head and maybe your your ringing will go away try it try it see what happens at any rate pico is extremely subtle nano is subtle too but it's a thousand times stronger than the schumer resonances the IMF is what I refer to as the upper DC circuit. This is the magnetosphere ionosphere combination, which holds a residual charge of 200 to 250,000 volts, kilovolts. This is measured on the nano scale as well. The lower DC circuit of the Earth's planetary magnetic grid is. Oh, these are a series of telluric currents around the globe. These are, all right, so the telluric currents, the lower DC circuit of the telluric currents, so the currents that go in the Earth, the, in the Earth itself, those are the lower DC circuit, and those are measured on the nano scale. Frequency is peak events or cycles. That's wave crest, that's wave crest, lull crest, measurement per second. So a peak event is like this here. See the peak event right there? That's a peak event, okay? And that those peaks are um, peak to peak is the measure of frequency. Okay, so uh, frequency, uh, people, uh, that's one of those words that people misuse all the time. There's a number of different things that people actually mean when they're using the word frequency that, they, that, that it's not a frequency, all right? They, it, it could, you could be rate, periodicity, right? Um, people also mean attitude. When they talk about frequency, they mean attitude and behavior and psychological characteristics such as that. And it's very common that people are talking about the thing being measured instead of the frequency. It's a common thing. Um, the vertical measurement or the, all right. So the frequency is the horizontal axis that's your your waves the, the the horizontal this right here the quality is the actually the waves that's peak to peak measurement uh the vertical measurement on the scale is decibels intensity as i've said um that's quantifying the voltage or the charge of the surrounding area of the antenna so the voltage is not they're not measuring something 20 kilometers away they, the antennas don't pick up that type of signal from that far away. 
right? It's a very subtle signal that they, that they measure within like five kilometers of the antenna. It's important to understand that, that, that the distance from the antenna to the, um, the, the burst, the event happening, is only, it's a short distance, maybe five kilometers, maybe six. Um, and any of these uh, scientific, um, the people that, that give you the data for you to understand, they, they tell you to be careful and beware of local industrial interference. So the people that run the antennas that, that maintain them explain to you it's important for you to understand that there are local interferences that you can't you should not confuse with the the ambient signal. That's why it is so difficult to get good pure Schumann resonance signals because they're so subtle and there's so many other things that are interfering with that signal. Electric cars, anything electric, anything. And that's basically the entire world we live in is electric. You know, or plug in, you got to plug it into the mainframe, networked, anything that's networked, anything with a sensor, anything that needs a battery will, even a AAA battery is still at least 100,000 times more powerful than the Schumann resonances. So the nano, nano scale is nine decimal points, or nano is nine decimal points below the theoretical zero decibel threshold. Read that again. Nano, the prefix nano, is nine decimal points below the theoretical zero level of the decibel threshold. So the one volt, right? It's hard to imagine negative volts. It's hard to imagine zero voltage, but at zero volts is our threshold. So the Schumer resonances are like a quadrillion. You know, they're they're five sets of zeros below zero. But the one volt is our threshold, like 0 0.01 or whatever is our threshold. Uh, micro is the, the, um, prefix micro is six decimal points below the theoretical zero decimal decibel point. Uh, get, get decimal and decibel confused. So decibel point. Our theoretical decimal point would be zero charge, zero volts as measured using amplitude as the intensity of the signal. Right. So our threshold of zero is like 0 0.1 volt. You couldn't feel that. There's no way you could feel that. And the Schumann resonances are a thousand million times or a, a million million times weaker than 0 0.1 volts. Uh, computer technology internally runs on a micro voltage. Cell phones are using micro voltages and micro amperes. <clears throat> we are surrounded by plug-in technologies, orders of magnitude more powerful than both the telluric currents of the planet and that much more so than the Schumer resonances, which are again on the Pico scale, which is indeed quite subtle. Right? The spectrogram plotter is a line level signal strength type of gadget. It's an electronic gadget that operates at a line level, which is at least a millivolt. Uh, sometimes some of them need microvolts, but it's at least a millivolt. Right? The spectrogram is not showing you the image of the actual signal of the environment. This right here, the amplitude, is the actual signal that's in the atmosphere, what the machine is actually picking up after it's been filtered. What it is showing you, is, what the spectrogram this is showing you is the composite view using four colors in four directions. Green, red, yellow, white, with dark blue being the residential color of the scope itself. And I'm using the term residential, meaning it's always there. It always lives in the background. The residential color that, I, that I, I'm using this phrase, residential color, that means that it's all going to go back to blue. 
If there's nothing else happening, if there's no activity, electric or magnetic activity happening on the chart, then it all reverts back to the dark blue of the residential blue of the background. That dark blue represents an at rest state in the environment. So the theoretical statistical at rest state in the environment is what the dark, dark blue, like this right here, boop, this right here is the dark, dark blue of the background. So it's way, way up high at these upper resonances. There's very little that goes on. All of the, all of the Schumer resonance stuff happens at the lowest of the frequencies. Uh, 7.8, 14.1, 21.7, you know, these kind of things. Um, and that's important to know. Uh, so when I say the residential color uh, of the spectrogram, that's what I mean. The, the color that it always reverts back to when there's nothing else happening. Um, so it's a dark blue, almost black, as you can see. I would call it navy blue. You know, not every, maybe not everyone knows what navy blue is, but if I say dark blue, every, you know, pretty much everyone knows. Dark, dark blue, almost black. Um, black blue? <laughs> maybe? I don't know. Um, so the spectrum is not the one picking up the, the antenna, the image from the antenna. Um, it represents, that blue represents the theoretical at-rest state in the environment. OK, as determined statistically, there is a computational algorithm or AI brain behind the computations of the coloring of the spectrogram. It's analyzing the signal. It's not detecting. It's not picking up the signal. It's qualifying the signal into different structures, different three dimensional um, structures and patterns for you to see so you can recognize what's there of what would, what would otherwise be invisible. Um, the, as I said before, the, the spectrogram is not what's plugged into the atmosphere. That would be the antenna itself. The spectrogram is not the antenna. It's not, what, it's not what's picking up the signal. The spectrogram is a domestic electronics device at its core. It's built to be operated without human intervention, largely. There's not really an easy or a simple place that a human can interject themselves into the equation once the machine is up and running. It's made to be a hands-free operation so that it's autonomous and the machine will keep doing what it's supposed to do without humans getting in there and meddling with it. Right? Um, and as I've, I have done a video on this before, um, but I will just say there are multiple articles at VLF.IT, which is a great place to go, um, on autonomous operations of detecting hardware. So um, I think it's some uh, either Cristiano, Cristiani, uh, Cristiano Fidel, uh, I forget the guy's name, Fidani, uh, uh, is one of the people, and then there's a, another one who has written articles on autonomous operations of the detecting equipment without humans getting involved. And Renato Romero is one of the other ones as well. He does the uh, the VLF um, monitoring station at Kumiania. That's his thing. And he has written at least one article, probably a few, on autonomous operations of the detecting equipment. So... <sighs> It's common, people coming into this, they think, oh, you know, someone's fiddling with this and, and, and manipulating it to hide data or something as, as if that's even reasonable in the assumption that someone would be hiding. Like, why? What, what do you think they're hiding? What, you know, what, what do you think you're missing that is being hidden from you? Like, I mean, I, 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 they can't even answer that. Oh, it's, you know, some ascension, blah, blah, blah. And there's, you know, it's just some generalized... Uh, invective against the people running the machine to cover over the fact that you don't know what you're looking at. You don't know what caused the data breach. So most people are going to just inter interject some crazy, stupid story to support their narrative. Right? So that's why it's important to understand that these things aren't being, you know, fiddled with by some human. They set up the machine, let it go. And unless something is, is broken, the humans don't get in and fiddle with it. 
And that's important to know, and that's why it's not them censoring data or them manipulating data or any of that, because number one, it's set up so that you don't do that. And number two, what did, why would they, why, what would be the purpose of them manipulating something when it's not going to hide what you think it is? Just ask yourself that. Why do you think they're hiding something when what they're hiding isn't proving your narrative? And so, again, it's important to understand that they do, you know, they, there are articles on autonomous operation of the station. And that's what you're ultimately looking for is so that someone doesn't get in there and, and accidentally mess with it and mess up the data. Um, and so it's important to have the, the equipment running as autonomously as possible. I'll put it that way. All right. Um, it's important to, and this is a review, it's important to understand that there is a data collection cycle of 20 minutes, perhaps 18 minutes, with a two-minute clear, uh, where the local storage of the machine's memory holds, and then it needs to purge. Right? So what happens is the data, there's two processes. There's it collecting the data, and then it sends it over to the storage. And the storage keeps it for the time that it sends it out. So while it's collecting new data, the old data is being purged. It's a fairly, you know, fairly simple operation that as one side is collecting it, the other side is sending it out, right? And it usually works out. The two of them work out that they work in, in pair. But you got to understand that, that there is a, a, a period where it has to purge the data. And sometimes if it doesn't get the network connection that it needs, if it doesn't, if it's not able to send that over the, um, the wire, then it holds up the operation. Right? And so what would be otherwise reading it, it stopped reading new data, it stopped taking it in until it purges the other data. And so, so there is a point that it, it, it clears out the cache, C A C spelt C A C H E cache, which is I think cache. So it clears out the cache to get new data. But if it, uh, if there's a problem with it connecting to the mainframe, it has to wait. It wait. It wait. It wait. It waits for the signal. And then when it gets a signal, it purges, and then the new stuff can get added to it. So. What, what might look like a drop is not necessarily a, a drop as if someone like shut something off, but there's the process of sending the signal off, sending it forward that may not get, how do I say this? It may not work out in synchronization so that it can bring the new data into the storage. There's memory and then there's storage. The memory is what's happening now. The storage is what, what is remembered, right? That, that's the long-term where the data goes to be held long-term. So the memory remembers everything, then it sends it over to the hard drive and the hard drive you know, has to send everything to the, the mainframe. So if there's problems connecting to the mainframe, the storage isn't going to be purging like it's supposed to. You know, there's not big hard drives, like right? there's data here, but there's not huge data storage. Everything is small and compact and they have like a memory chips and these kind of things, right? You know, if you saw what, what they use, they don't use a big computer with a server and a mainframe and all of that. Like these, the antennas are out outside. They're out, out in the field and they have boxes that that protect the equipment but they're small they don't you know like they keep everything as small and transportable and 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 coherent and and tight and as as best they can because they're out in the field and they don't and they want a smaller target if you will less obstruction less interference a bigger box gives you more interference, you know, these kind of things. More a more complicated system opens up to a, opens you up readily to more more of a failure. Right. 
hopefully you understand what I'm saying. You know, the more complicated it gets, the more you're, you're open up to, you know, something going wrong, right? So that's why they, why they keep these, the, the footprint of these things are small and tight and compact and, and concise and, and tra uh, transportable as possible to reduce problems, right? And, it, and it's important to understand that the majority of the Schumer resonance um, collection is autonomous. There's not someone standing there watching it. Right? You, don't, you don't know what, more to the point, you're not readily seeing one for one as this happens now. You're getting the data. There's a, there's a lapse, you know, 20 minutes here, another 20 minutes there. And then eventually they'll look, look up the data later on, hours and hours and hours later or a day later or whatever. But no one is standing there watching this data for what comes up. Oh, now, yeah, like, yeah, we'll just, right now, this second, right here, we'll cut it off. It's absurd to think that you have someone who's who's censoring it as it's coming out live, as it's coming out live, all right? People will say, well, that's not what we were meaning. That's not what we said. We just said it's manipulated. It can be done afterwards. And then my my response to that is how? How are you doing that as a JPEG? You know, are you putting it in Illustrator and chopping some data out of it? How? How exactly are you cutting up the data? Right? The 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 people with this idea that it's manipulated or it's being you know falsified. How exactly is that being done? You can please answer me that if you can. If you don't, you don't know how. It doesn't matter. They're not doing it anyway. Okay. And just because you can't explain something and you know it's happening doesn't mean it actually is happening outside in the real world. There's plenty of stuff. You don't know what's happening and it's happening in your head. And that's fine with that. Right? But as far as the scientists over at Tomsk in Russia fiddling with the data, that's not what they're doing. No one has time for that kind of shit. No one. No one the world over has time for that. especially when you can't say why they would be hiding anything other than the bullshit narrative of ascension energies. None of it makes sense. Sorry. Please just learn how to read the equipment. And then once you learn how to read the equipment, there is enough fascinating stuff in there. You don't need to make up and invent things that are happening that the machine can't otherwise detect anyway. Schumann resonances, detectors can't pick up broken timelines. It's not able to detect gamma rays. It's not able to detect ascension energy. It's not built to decipher any of that. The Schumann resonances are the echoes of lightning that reverberate around the environment that eventually catch up with themselves and cause Schumann resonances as a series of harmonics in the atmosphere, operating at a very subtle, subtle rate, far below the power rating, far below anything else in the globe. As far as I know, it is the most subtle of all the energies out there. And everything else, as far as I can tell, everything else is stronger than the Schumann resonances. So, if you're asking, do the Schumann resonances cause this or that? Chances are, no, it doesn't. It's the most subtle form of the energy, no. There are other culprits that are much more stronger, that are much more deserving to being looked at as a possible potential cause of your vertigo, your, your, um, the ringing in your ears, the whatever. Whatever ungrounded effects are happening, that you need to ground yourself for. No, it's not the Schumer resonance is doing that. All right, so um, that's it today. That's it for this. Um, we're at an hour, give or take an hour. I'm gonna play some music, um, another eight minutes or so, I think, whatever. Um, the, whatever the, the mix, the, the length of the mix is, and then close this out and um, probably put online. Stumbles and, and all. Stumbles, fumbles, and flubs such as they are. All right, so let's see what we got for your music, shall we? All right, I'll catch you on the other side of the mix.
Okay, got a minute. I'm gonna let it play just another minute, not even like 30 seconds, I think. 111 11, I'm ending it. So, on that cheery note, have a good rest of your day. Thank you all for being here. Much love. And I appreciate everyone for being here, your comments, and thank you. Have a great rest of your night. Namaste.